Thanks for the warm welcome. My name is Cesario. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Texas A&M, working with Dr. Kinsey Skillen. And the um, talk that I'm going to give today is on multi-objective density diagrams developed with machine learning to optimize sustainability and cost efficiency of UHPC. This was part of my PhD study with Dr. Zachary Graisley. <clears throat> so the motivation for this study, um, as you all know, the emergence of advanced, advanced concrete technologies such as UHPC in the last uh, two decades has coincided with global efforts towards uh, sustainability. And we want to know at some point if we have metrics and ways to clearly show if this material is eco-efficient and cost-efficient. So the issue with the metrics we have now, for instance, the environmental product declarations, is that um, it only reports the embodied carbon footprint uh, in a volumetric way, right? Uh, per cubic meter or uh, cubic yard. But that uh, doesn't really account for the influence of the material properties in the, in the efficiency, geometric efficiency that you can get. So um, there is a major need, I would say, in our uh, field on tools and metrics to accurately and efficiently compare different mixed designs and also different concrete technologies per se. So um, we believe that more sustainable solutions can be achieved if we focus the keys on mixed design optimization and to also create tools that um, can show us the trade-offs between performance cost and um, emissions uh, at the same time. So, <clears throat> I have a few research questions uh, so we can keep track of where we're going. So the first one that we try to answer in our research is if we can accurately estimate the compressive strength as a function of the ingredients we have with few experimental runs and machine learning. Um, we also want to know if we can show these predictions in an easy and intuitive way uh, rather than just having sheets or softwares. Um, we also want to look if we can evaluate the effect of mixed proportion and mechanical performance on cost and equi-efficiency simultaneously. And finally, we want to try to help answer one of the questions that you're always thinking about is, are high-paced contents or ultra-high-strength concretes detrimental to cost or equi-efficiency? So um, I will not go into too much detail on the model by itself because this was part of a previous presentation, but just to give you some context, um, the method that we did to optimize the um, UHPC mix during my dissertation was to design, use the design of experiments focused on orthogonal arrays to reduce the experimental runs, uh, model it with some machine learning models, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later use comparison indices and metrics that account for um, embodied CO2 and uh, compressive strength for this um, example. And finally, use these predictions uh, and these indices to create these multi-objective density diagrams. And there you have an example of an orthogonal array that we used. Um, it's basically used to collect strategic points in our domain um, um, so we can model uh, the behavior of the material inside that domain of mixed proportions. Um, and uh, my particular strategy at the time was to first optimize uh, at the binder scale uh, and just change the cementitious materials that I had available at the time. And at the second phase, optimize my uh, aggregate uh, um, and my UHPC as a whole while I still used um, information on the water cement ratio and the super plus size for my machine learning modeling. Um, just to give you an insight of the models, we used KNN and Random Forest. KNN stands for K nearest neighbors, if you're not familiar. And we compared <coughs> the prediction uh, to just linear regression. And if you take a look at the two bottom models, that's the ones we end up using for the diagrams. Um, both in the training and testing sets, we were able to um, estimate the behavior or, or the trends, let's say, in that domain uh, with a pretty balanced residual mean square error. Um, this model is not perfect, but you'll be surprised that we built this with basically um, 75 data points, um, experimental units at, at max. 
So, um, and you can see that it's very different from the polynomial model at the top where there's no real correlation between prediction and, um, and the actual outcome. So these answers are first question. And uh, if you want to look a little bit into, uh, I'll show you the, the QR code for the paper. Um, we can estimate, and again, it's not predict to the one megapascal, but we can accurately estimate the compressive strength behavior for the domain of mixed designs if we can use um, uh, proper factorial design uh, strategies and machine learning. Um, now, performance density diagrams. It's going to help us look into our models in an easy and intuitive way. Um, these diagrams basically resemble a matrix of counterplots, okay, where our main variables are in the x and y direction um, axis, and the other variables are um, basically organized by uh, by the uh, boxes. And your outcome is the density of the diagram. So this will help you basically take a look inside at your prediction model and um, and see if the trends of your model make sense or not. So this is basically going to be almost like a uh, a portrait of your material. So just to give you an example how this looks, um, when I was optimizing the binder um, phase, you have micro silica at the x-axis, slag in the y-axis, fly ash um, faster by, by blocks, and if you want to pick a mix with 130 megapascals, um, you can simply um, use this combination of material, but as you can see, there's multiple combinations you could use here and account for the materials that you have in your region to um, um, achieve this given mechanical performance. Uh, you can also use it to track your flow. This is something we're doing in a, in a new study. Uh, now that uh, we fix the, the proportions of our cementitious and then we're just changing the replacement level the water cement ratio and the superplus sizer, and we're trying to make sure that all the mixes we look at are within the range that we typically use for HVC, which is 20 to 25 centimeters um, of flow, self-consolidating flow. And we can also um, combine these predictions for different objectives, not just compressive strength. You can have flow, you can have uh, tensile strength, you can have different uh, shrinkage, and then you filter out all the mixes that do not meet a certain design criteria. And now you can look at all the other alternatives you have to uh, design your material. You can use these diagrams for categorical predictions. If you want to see what type of fracture type you can have, or you can use it as a probability uh, of one of the failure types happening. So again, I'll refer you to this paper to see more details on the models themselves. Um, during my PhD, this is what I used to create um, uh, 155 megapascal uh, UHPC with more uh, sand than cement issues and with the OPC content uh, of 725 kilograms per cubic meter. And from what I searched in the literature at that time, it was under what's typically uh, shown. So uh, now, focusing on the cost and environmental impact metrics. Um, these efforts were started by Dr. Sebi Miller um, and in that work um, by uh, Kurapaz and, and, and Miller, they came up with a few uh, comparison indices that account for the volumetric environmental impact, but also a given mechanical performance indicator. And we extended that work. We made a modification on one of the indexes to account for the different um, modulus of rupture that we can get with, um, uh, with UHPC and high-performance concrete as well. So uh, just to give you an idea, the X column is an index for short columns or any, let's say, element that's dominated by compression where the effects of buckling are negligible. So you have volumetric environmental impact in the numerator and compressive strength in the denominator. And the X cracking is the environmental um, equi-efficiency index for um, first cracking. So basically this is something you would use in overlay uh, case if you have a simply, if you model your uh, slab as a simply supported beam. So just, um, this is in a very uh, initial uh, phase 
uh, but um, we're also creating these uh, indexes in terms of cost. And uh, the only thing that changes here is the unit cost at the top. And before I go to the next slide, I want to tell that the goal of these indexes is to minimize them. So for instance, if you want the most cost efficient mix in this case, you want one with the least uh, volumetric um, unit cost and the highest compressive strength, just to give you an idea. So the, the lower the indices, the better the, the, the mix is for that particular solution. And again, we can use these diagrams and filter out mixes that don't meet a certain strength. So now if you're looking at the X column index and you're trying to optimize for compressive strength, you can pick any of these mixes and you know that the compressive strength is already above uh, what you have decided as, your, uh, as imposed by design. Okay. Now, just to give you an idea of some numbers, if you look at these two mixes, you can see that the mix with the lowest embodied CO2, um, it's actually not the mix with the lowest X column index. What does this mean? This means that um, with the first mix, you can reduce the cross-section of the column uh, at a certain level that the total carbon footprint of that column would be less than uh, the second mix, even though the, uh, you have more embodied CO2 in that mix. So this is how we would be comparing apples to apples in this case. Um, we also um, combine these indexes to look at um, um, cost and environmental impact at the same time. And we also uh, extended these indices for multi-members. So for an application where you're using one type of concrete for different members, you want to also optimize everything, not optimize just a column and just a beam, because typically you know you use one, one concrete for all the elements. So these answers are third question. So the, f the last one, are high paste contents and ultra high strength concrete detrimental to eco-efficiency? And what I did is I picked a few mixes that I got from that optimization study and some other UHPC mixes from uh, the literature. Uh, I did use some of your mixes here. You'll be happy with the results. <laughs> um, and compared to different concretes in, um, in general. So if you look at these indexes, uh, I would say the red, uh, the red points are normal strength concrete. Yellow is self-consolidating concrete. Green is high-performance, high-strength concrete, and blue is UHPC. And if we're trying to minimize these indexes, the, the two graphs on the top are um, eco-efficiency for column and for, for scratching, and the bottom is cost efficiency. You can see that uh, UHPC, a lot of these mixes on UHPC, especially the, the hollow blue ones, are actually more eco-efficient and cost-efficient than uh, most of the other concrete technologies. But more important than that is not to make a case for the material, but the most important trend that you can see here is that you can design bad and good mixes with all types of concrete technologies. So that's why our focus should be on having the right metrics, but also the right optimization uh, um, um, protocols to get there. And if you add fibers to all of these, all of these uh, concretes, so if you have an application where high quality fibers are required, for instance, for like seismic application or stuff like that, now you can see that as you're increasing the compressive strength of the material, it's getting even more eco-efficient and cost-efficient especially because, you know, these fibers, especially the steel fibers that we use in HPC are typically more than half the cost of the, of the materials. So um, if we look now in terms of the binder content in the x-axis, you can see that there is no real correlation between the binder content and equine cost efficiency. So you're increasing the binder content but you're not making your material worse or better, right? It depends on the mix that we're dealing with, okay? So this is a, uh, this is a, 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 clear, a clear sign that for the indices that we showed, again, there's a lot of more indices to be done. There's a lot of other 
mechanical properties to look at, but for the ones we did so far, there's no correlation between binder content and um, sustainability. Um, if you look at the multi-objectives now, if we combine cost and eco-efficiency, again, same thing. You can see that you can make good and bad, bad mix designs with all of all types of concrete technologies. And if you're adding fibers, you're most likely get uh, the best use if if you're using UHPC or high high strength concretes if the design is properly made. So. Um, I hope this answered at least um, the question of if, if it's for sure high binder contents or ultra high strength concrete is bad for sustainability or cost. And you can see with numbers that they are not, okay? They are not, and we should um, have the right metrics to compare them. Um, so what's the implications? I think that this type of diagrams could be used um, this study would give you some guidance on how to develop these. And I really believe eco-efficiency density diagrams and multi-objective density diagrams would be a very useful uh, um, uh, tool to have in environmental product declarations rather than just your carbon foot per footprint per cubic meter or cubic yard of concrete. Um, this will, um, can also facilitate the decision making in terms of your mixed design, you can look at, you can consider material availability. Are you in an area that you have fly ash? Do you have slag? Do you have slag this month? Do you have slag only in two months? Do you want to stop or use another mix that you know is going to work? Um, and all of that, this is what these diagrams would be able to do for you. Um, and I think it would facilitate the communication between non-expert personnel in AI models. That's why I say these models are almost like a, a portrait of your material. It's easier to look inside and see the trends, and then you can see if you actually believe what this model is telling you, the predictions. Am I increasing the strength, lowering the Warsman ratio? Uh, like some, you can use your engineering judgment to really see if the model is not overtrained or with data leakage, so which is very important too. Um, and this would also encourage innovative mixed designs with new materials. You know, we have right now nano, a lot of um, different nanomaterials. There are these low carbon cements um, uh, coming on board. We have electric, electrically produced cements. At least I have knowledge of two that are being patented and they are upscaling now from the uh, pound scale to tons. So as soon as these materials get into the market, you won't have the 2,000 or 3,000 data points that you typically would need to make the traditional AI modeling. So I think this would be a strategy that you can quickly estimate how you get a good mix with few experimental runs with new materials where you don't have where to get the data at the end of the day. Um, as future work, we want to develop uh, eco-efficiency indexes for most of all of the typical structural components of UHPC. So this would be actually something that people use in the design or at least consult when comparing different uh, UHPC mixes. Uh, and, these mix, and these indices, they don't account for a lot of other uh, important things that UHPC provide us. For example, durability. That indice doesn't even have yet um, uh, a coefficient that accounts for the service life, right? Once you introduce that, you know that UHPC is going to even show a better performance than what it shows so far. It doesn't also show yet the difference in span spacings that you can get with UHPC, which all obviously will influence the weight of the, the superstructure, the number and volumes of supports you're using, and the type and amount of steel you're using, considering that the fibers will allow you to um, um, reduce a lot the uh, shear reinforcement. Um, these pictures are from uh, San Antonio. I think uh, this is not to make a criticism at all, but I believe we can make less congested uh, infrastructure once we start using HPC uh, more um, because of what all of this material can provide you. 
And we are also looking into developing these performance density diagrams and efficiency uh, density diagrams uh, for the fiber, use of fibers in concrete. I think this is the biggest use for these diagrams because as you know, as you're changing your matrix, uh, the relationship between the amount of fibers you have also change. So the optimum 2% fibers or 1.5% fibers is only optimum for a certain types of matrices. Now, if you're changing that and you're changing the fibers and now you're dealing with multi-scale fiber reinforcement, carbon nanofibers, uh, steel fibers, uh, maybe even some hemp uh, fibers for sustainability. You want to optimize all of them together and satisfy multiple uh, objectives. Um, and I think we can also make these models for normal strength concrete. The only issue is we need more information about individual particle makeup and the ITZ as well, uh, because we know of the big influence of the ITZ. I don't think with simple the, um, simply the amount of ingredients you can properly estimate the strength of normal strength concrete just with ingredients. Um, so um, this is part one of the study. This is the paper that talks about the data collection and the models. Um, feel free to take a look at it. Okay, and this is the second paper that was uh, focused more on the cost and equity efficiency density diagrams. Okay, so thank you for your time. Uh, if you want to learn more about these, uh, these diagrams and these methods, please feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to have a good talk to you. Thank you all.